This is a video to support a course I'm teaching on an introduction to proof writing. And this is one last video about counting before we start talking about proof writing in the next video. So I want to recall a couple of things that we did last time. And the first thing is counting the number of possible lists subject to certain conditions. And the second is the number of subsets. So let's suppose that there are AI choices for the ith entry of an n element list. Then there are a1 times a2 all the way up to a n such lists. So we did a bunch of examples like that in the last video in this series. Then next, the number of k elements subsets of an n element set is this binomial coefficient n choose k which is this descending product of k terms in the numerator, n times n minus one, all the way down to n minus k plus one over k factorial. Or we could think about this as n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial. Really, this middle thing is a better definition because you could define that even when n is not a natural number, while this only works if n is a positive integer. Okay, so we're going to look at the notion of inclusion exclusion here, and this is not exhaustive at all. Again, this is just like a couple of techniques so we can get to writing simple proofs as soon as possible. So if A and B are finite sets, then the size of A union B, or the cardinality of A union B, is equal to the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B minus the cardinality of A intersected with B. Because notice when we count up the number of elements in A and B, we've double counted the number of elements in both, but that means we need to subtract off one of those countings of the elements in both, and that's what we do by subtracting that intersection. So I'm gonna go through maybe three examples. Some of them are pretty simple, but the main goal is just to have a couple of techniques under our belt so that we can write proofs. So our first question is how many subsets are there of this five element set one, two, three, four, five? So let's notice that there are going to be six types of subsets. There will be zero element subsets. There'll be one element subsets, two, three, four, and five element subsets. So the zero element subset, well, that's clearly just the empty set. There are going to be five one element subsets, all of the singletons. Well, and then you can write down all of the other subsets, but we don't really need to do that because we've got this rule right here that the number of K element subsets of an N element set is this N choose K. So that means this number right here will be five choose zero because we've got five element set we're taking zero element subsets and then this number right here will be five choose one this will be five choose two there are five choose two two element subsets here there are five choose three three element subsets there will be five choose four four element subsets and finally, there'll be five, choose five, five element subsets. But now if we make this calculation, which I'll let you guys do, you'll see that this number is one, this number is five, this number is actually 10, this number is also 10, this number is five, and then this number is one. Let's really quickly do that. Notice this is five times four over two factorial by this formula right here. So that's 20 over two, which is 10. So yeah, that's right. Now next, how many total subsets are there? Were there? Well, there are only these six types of subsets. So if we just count all of these up, then we have the number of total subsets. So if you add all of these numbers up, you get 32. And notice, we really use the inclusion exclusion principle here. We just didn't need to subtract anything because our sets did not overlap. It's impossible to be a two element subset and a three element subset at the same time. So another thing I wanna notice is that this 32 is equal to two to the fifth power and five was the number of elements in the original set. And this is actually um, easily generalizable, but that'll be something that we do when we look at proofs by induction. 
Okay, let's look at another example. So for our next example, we're gonna count up how many three card hands are either all reds, so that would be either diamonds or hearts, or all face cards. So let's do this a little more systematically. So we'll name our sets. So let's say our set A is going to be equal to all three card, all red hands. And then we'll say B is all three card, all face card hands. Now we need to count up the number of elements in A and the number of elements in B and the number of elements in A intersect B. So let's see if we can do that. So notice that our goal in the end is the size of A union B. So using this inclusion exclusion, that's going to be the size of A plus the size of B minus the size of A intersect B. So let's see if we can count this up. How many elements are in A? Well, so we need to choose three cards from all of the red cards. Well, there are 26 red cards because half of the cards of a 52 card deck are red. So that makes this number right here, 26 choose three. We're choosing a three element subset of a 26 element set. The 26 element set is the set of red cards. Okay, now let's look at B. This will be all three card, all face card hands. So let's see, how many face cards are there? Well, there are three face cards, Jack, Queen, and King for each suit. So that makes 12 total face cards, and we need to choose three of them. So here we'll have plus 12 choose three. Then next, we need to subtract this intersection. So that would be all three cards hands where they are both red and face cards. Well, how many red face cards are there? Well, there are six because there are three that are hearts and three that are diamonds. So that means we need to subtract off six, choose three. And so then we can just calculate that number, which maybe I won't do, but that will give us the number of three card hands that are either all red or all face cards. Okay, let's do one more. For our last example, we're gonna count up how many five card hands are straights. That means the numbers are in order, like two, three, four, five, six, or flushes. That means they're all the same suit. For example, all hearts. So let's maybe give a name to each of these setups. So let's say being a straight is like being in the set A, and being a flush is like being in the set B. So let's count up how many straights there are, and we can do that by denoting it as the cardinality of A. So there are 10 different ways to start. We could either start at aces and then go ace through five, or we could start at two and go two through six, all the way up to the possibility of starting at 10 and going 10, jack, queen, king, ace. So that gives all of the starting points for our straights. But then members of a straight don't need to be in the same suit. So in fact, we've got four choices for the two, four choices for the three, four for the four, four for the five, and four for the six. So that's four to the five total straights that start with a two. In fact, it's four to the five total straights that start with any of these numbers, which tells us that the size of this set A will be 10 times four to the five. So now let's go on to flushes. So this is gonna be denoted by the size of the set B. So we still have a couple of possibilities here. We have four different types of flushes. We have all hearts, we have all diamonds, we have all clubs and all spades. So those are our four possibilities for flushes. But how many ways are there to choose all hearts? Well, we need to choose five hearts from the 13 to total hearts. So that'll be 13 choose five, but then there'll be 13 choose five for all of these. So that's gonna give us four times 13 choose five. That's the number of flushes. Now, what about A intersect B? So that'll be the number of so-called straight flushes. 
Well, how many of those are there? There are only four straight flushes starting with aces because once you've picked your starting suit, all of the other cards have been decided. So if you start with an ace of hearts, then all of the rest of the cards have to be hearts. So there are four straight flushes that start with ace. There are four that start with two. There are four with start that start with all of those, meaning that all in all, there are 40 straight flushes. So in the end, the final answer to our question will be this inclusion exclusion arithmetic problem. So we've got 10 times five, 10 times four to the five plus four times 13 choose five and then minus 40. And that's a good place to stop.